All right, YouTube, David Harry here, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to put together the cheapest four terabyte USB-C external SSD storage drive that you can possibly put together. Now, a few things before we get into this. One is I'm using my MacBook Pro here. However, this particular drive will work on any type of Windows PC, Mac PC, Linux PC. In fact, any type of computer device that uses USB-C and can read data and write data to an external drive. So work on anything. Also, I'm using USB-C here to connect to my Mac. However, you can use a slightly different cable which goes USB-C to USB-A. So that will connect to anything from USB-2 up to USB-3 as well. I will show a quick example of a cable like that. However, I am doing this very specifically for USB-C for the connection on my Mac, which although it is Thunderbolt, it will accept USB-C as well now also something else that i'm going to have to point out here this particular drive is a samsung qvo drive now whilst it is the cheapest it's the cheapest for like maybe one very particular reason and that is it does not have the fastest write speeds now without getting too technical about this what happens is the write speed on this drive is going to be like really fast for like so long like so for so many gigabytes it'll be dead fast if you just use say a single say one gigabyte file and threw it over it's going to just go over dead fast however if you use large amounts of data what you will see is that it will go on dead quick and then suddenly it will drop down maybe to around 160 megabytes per second somewhere in that region however for my particular use and for most people's use the vast majority of the time spent with an external drive is reading from it and in that instance this is going to be just as fast as like your average Average kind of SATA SSD drive so just bear that in mind it's not going to be the fastest for writing but in most instances that's not going to bother most people but where it does work really well is for the read speeds and at that point you've got four terabytes worth of storage that you can read from like relatively fast you can of course use things like Thunderbolt and I've already done a, a video about putting a Thunderbolt drive together however you start like spending a lot more money for stuff like that you can also buy an off-the-shelf USB-C storage solution which is SSD which is going to be quite fast as well however they're going to be a lot more expensive than putting one together yourself so just bear all that in mind this really is a drive of convenience so it's got a large amount of fast reading space from it such as four terabytes which is huge really when you think about it for SSD especially if you've bought a Mac and you were thinking about going from one terabyte up to four terabytes it's going to cost you a grand to do that internally given that's going to be like way way faster however if you're just doing stuff like reading like reading files say for photo stuff video editing music and stuff like that these are going to be awesome and i will be doing read and write speeds for this as well just so you can see some tests happening with it anyways after all that explaining i will now get into putting this together and then i will get on and do some speed tests and stuff all right so on to putting the drive together then and as I've already pointed out, this is going to be using a Samsung 870 QVO 2.5 inch SATA SSD. So let me just put that box out of the way. Now as far as the enclosure is concerned, I'm going to be using one by Antec here. And you can obviously use whatever you want to use here as far as the enclosure is concerned, just as long as it is a 2.5 inch SATA to USB-C enclosure. But the reason why I'm going to use this one is because it looks quite interesting. And that's because the outside of this particular enclosure has got like an alloy kind of material on it, maybe aluminium or something. But whatever it is, it may well be something that will help for heat dissipation. If not, it actually just looks quite nice as well. So I'm really into the way it looks. Now, what I'm going to do here is show you how to undo this. Oh, yeah. And what it is, this is a toolless design so no screws or anything which is pretty neat so what we do here on this side we can see there's like a little arrow here pointing that way so just push down and then push forward so down and forward and then that is going to release everything so the whole mechanism now means that this will come apart so what we do we just pull forward here and then the outer case will just come off dead easily like that now inside here what we should be able to see 
is the SATA data and power connection. And what we simply do is just get the two and a half inch SATA drive, get the data and power connections there, just line them up with the ones in there like so, just slide the drive into the case like this. They will match up and then just push them in together and then that's it. That is now connected, locked and in place. Also, we have got this little foam disc here. Now that's got a sticky piece on the back. You just peel that off and it becomes sticky. And the reason why we have that is because you can get like different, slightly different thicknesses on these drives, like seven mil and stuff and nine mil and whatnot. Well, you can use these to pad out the drive inside. So although I'm not gonna stick it down, I'm gonna put it on anyway, just so we can see that that can go on the drive whilst the sleeve goes back over or the outer case. So just line up the outer case to go back in and we can see this easily because it's got a notch there. So that notch moves forward to the back and it actually lines up there with the light indicator. So I'm just push, push this on and then let me just get that foam piece just in there. Okay, so as you can see, the foam piece will go in there and like thicken out whatever's inside so it doesn't move. And then boom, we push that on there like that. And then all we do, we just take that plastic retainer bit there Make sure we line the two arrows up, as we should be able to see there, two arrows, and then put that one up there and then push down a bit and then pull it back. And then there we go, the drive is all together. And then, all we simply do is get the USB-C to USB-C cable, pop one end into the drive, obviously, and then just pop the other end into the Mac or whatever computer device it is that you're using. Actually, before I forget, and as I've already said, you can plug this type of drive into any kind of traditional USB-A socket as well. So all you do, you just use a cable like this, which has got USB-C on one end and USB-A on the other. In this instance, this USB-A is also USB-3. You simply obviously just plug the USB-C end of the cable into the drive like that and then just pop that end into your computer or whatever device you want to use it with that's got USB-A on. There will be a link in the description to this cable as well. Okay, so the drive is now connected to my Mac and it is shown up here on the desktop as untitled. However, I'm going to do another format on this just so I've got a definite clean drive. Now, regardless of whether or not this is something that you've just put together, it is fresh, or whether it is another drive that's being used that's been on a previous system or something like that, I would strongly recommend that you always start off by doing a fresh format regardless of where the drive has come from and regardless of what its previous use was whether it's being used or not so what we're going to do here is launch the disk utility so if you know where disk utility is you go ahead and launch that however you can find that by going to the search tool up here or the spotlight search click on that then start typing disk then at some point, what's gonna happen, it will come up here and show you disk utility. So go ahead, click on that and launch it. Now, once we're in disk utility, it is important to have our view set to show all devices. So make sure in view is show all devices. So there we go, we're showing all devices. Now what we need to do here is to navigate to the drive. Well, here is the drive here and it is there untitled. Now I've got a lot of other stuff going on here because there's disk images open and stuff like that. You may see other stuff than what you're seeing here on my system. However, just go straight to the new drive that you've got attached to the system and then click on the root of it here don't click on like a partition or anything like that or any kind of the volume structure or anything like that click on the root of the drive here and then what we do we go up to arrays here so click on arrays now i'm going to choose format here and choose xfat now xfat is chosen there for format and then as far as the scheme is concerned, we have to use GUID because of the size of the drive and we want to use XFAT for it. So there we go. So XFAT GUID. Now just quickly at this point, I've done a couple of these videos now. 
And some people just want to kind of like get off on the comments and start going on about like, oh, you shouldn't be using XFAT for Mac and stuff like that. Well, that's actually completely wrong. What it is, XFAT is a, basically it's a universal format that many things can read. So don't forget, although we're on a Mac here, this is an external drive and you may want to use this on a Windows system or a Linux system or something else. In that instance, you're going to have to use something that they can read and write to and XFAT is that format. Any of these Apple specific formats, you won't be able to use them on like Windows and Linux, you know, very well, you won't be able to use them easily, let's put it that way. And the other thing as well here, the actual write speeds and read speeds are not going to be affected by this particular format. It's just going to be so that we've got something that can be read and write in any system, not just the Mac that you're going to be putting it in. Okay, so here we go. As far as name is concerned, I'm going to call this four terabyte SSD okay you can call yours whatever you want and then we'll go off and we'll erase that so the erase in here basically is just going to reformat and everything as we can see that's all done pretty quick so let's just do done there now what I'm going to do first of all as far as the testing is concerned is to use a speed test program so I'm going to launch this here which is the black magic speed test program now, this is going to be really good for testing for, like, you know, big files. Um, because, basically, I'm going to be using this drive here for mostly video-type stuff and large files, pictures, audio, and stuff like that. You can use other types of speed tests, which are basically just going to give you like a lot more information about using tiny files and loads and loads of like you know weird files that are all over the place on the drive and do a full-on stress test to be honest i don't have an interest for that type of stuff with this particular drive and i'm going to suggest that most people won't be either because they're probably going to be using these types of things as more like storage drives for media and things like that in which case the black magic speed test is going to be a good thing to do on it so let's go here and I'm gonna go select target. And then for the target, I'm gonna to say to it, go to the four terabyte SSD. Let's open that, and now let's start the test. Okay, and oh, that's pretty good. So just over 400 megabytes per second for the right. So I'm gonna let this go through maybe twice, we'll see what it's up to. And the read is just over 380. So again, that's not bad either. You have to remember here, this is basically a SATA SSD. So these speeds that we're looking at here are very, very respectable. And to be honest, even the fastest of these SATA drives, even when they're internal on a machine, you're not really going to be getting that much more better than this as far as read and write is concerned. You might start getting up to 450, 460 and stuff like that. But just due to the nature of like SATA 3, and whatnot the type of NAND being used and system overhead and things like that you're just not going to see anything really that much like not much much faster than these the only time you're going to see better like numbers than this is if you're going to be using bespoke kind of like you know off the shelf drives say like Samsung T7s and stuff like that which have got very fast NAND on them and although they are on USB-C the drive itself is going to be much faster than what these are. And then obviously you can go to Thunderbolt and stuff like that. And if you go to Thunderbolt, then obviously you're going to be getting into like, you know, really, really high speeds. But again, as, like I said before, things like, you know, these off the shelf drives by say like SanDisk and Samsung that have got really fast drives and a more real fast memory and NAND in them. The problem with them is they're going to be a lot more expensive at four terabyte than what this is and then obviously just forget about it as far as thunderbolt is concerned because that's really really expensive anyways i'm going to stop that as we can see it's about 400 for the right and about 380 odd for the read which is really really respectable for this so what i'm going to do now is exit that and now i am going to do my real world disk test so just give us a second while i set up a stopwatch Okay, so I've got my stopwatch set up here. This is the four terabyte drive, and here is a folder which has got, let's see, it has 58.7 gigabytes worth of video files in it. So what I'm going to do first of all is test 
the right speed of the drive by dropping the folder onto the drive and then timing it. So we're going to time to see how long it takes to write 58.7 gigabytes worth of data. So let me just drop this and then quickly hit start. So drop, start, oh, start, there we go. Maybe I was about a second out there. So what I'm gonna do here is just speed through this and let's get to the end and let's just see how long it's gonna to take to write 58.7 gigabytes worth of video files. Okay, so I'm gonna come back in here. So I'm just ready to hit stop as soon as those files have been written there. So hopefully it's not too far off there. Oh, there we go. Okay, so that took five minutes and 23 seconds to write just over 58 gigabytes worth of data to the four terabyte SSD. Now what I'm gonna do now is test for the read speed. So what I'm gonna do is just delete the files from the desktop there and then I'm going to drag the folder back to the desktop and then time how long that takes. So give us one second, so oh, reset, start. <laughs> I'll add two seconds onto the end of that one because I think I might have been two seconds out. Okay, so what I'm gonna do once again is just speed through this and let's just see how long it's going to take to write back these 58 gigabytes worth of files. So this is now the read speed that we're testing for. All right, so having accounted for the odd couple of seconds here and there due to the lack of timing with the stopwatch and my ability to hit the stop and the start button as quickly as possible, I have now come up with some numbers here. So we'll go through these quickly and I will do a little bit of an analysis and summary. So once again, this has been the Samsung 870 QVO 4 terabyte. And what we've used here is a folder which contained 58.7 gigabytes worth of video files. The right time for that folder was five minutes and 23 seconds. And the read time was two minutes and 26 seconds. So as far as a summary is concerned, the write time obviously is quite slow, but as I've maintained through this video, the write speeds here and the write times are basically for people who don't mind waiting just that little bit longer as far as the writing process is concerned. However, the read time for this for the folder was two minutes and 26 seconds. So that was twice as fast for the reading as what it was for the writing. And this is the important thing here to have four terabytes worth of space where you can read back off it relatively quickly. So as you can see there, it was no slouch as far as the read times were concerned. Now, of course, if writing and write speeds and such are more important to you, then and this may not be the best solution. However, if you need something where you need to write a lot of video files to, a lot of audio pictures, and basically any other kind of like large storage files, then this could be the perfect solution because obviously its read times are very good. And like I've already said, as far as SATA drives are concerned, the read speed, especially here, is thereabouts at the top end of what you will be able to do with any traditional SATA SSD on SATA 3 anyway. And obviously, as I've already mentioned as well, you can do this with the likes of like, you know, off the shelf systems like the T7 drives by Samsung, which are definitely gonna give you faster read and write speeds. Also, there are SanDisk solutions, which are also gonna be faster. However, at four terabytes, they are going to cost a fair bit more money. And then you've obviously also got Thunderbolt as a solution, but once you get to four terabytes on Thunderbolt, they are extremely expensive. Anyways, YouTube, I think this video has probably run its course now, and it has been quite a long one. However, hopefully the information in here has been good enough for people to work out as to whether or not such a four terabyte SSD external solution on USB-C is going to be good enough for them. Now, if you're into this type of stuff and into stuff to do with like the MacBooks and also iPads and things like that, definitely keep an eye on me channel and stuff because I will be doing a whole bunch of videos during this next month to do with the MacBooks and things and iPads and all that. And if you've liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing to me channel and clicking on the bell notification icon to be notified of similar videos and stuff to do with the MacBooks and the iPads and all that stuff blah 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 anyways i'm david harry thank you very much for watching this video take care and goodbye now